Hey YouTube, in this video, I'm going to be going over a kind of a quick sort of optimization, if you want to call it that. Some people might say it's an overclock. No, it's not really an overclock, but it is basically getting free performance with minimal changes in the BIOS to a 7950X 3D. So this was shown to me by one of my members in the Discord for the YouTube channel. So if you guys like to overclock CPUs or optimize your hardware and get free additional performance, feel free to join the Discord. Uh, there are a lot of helpful members in there. I mean, it is a small community, but we are kind of growing. Without further ado, let's kind of get into it. So this is a relatively simple tweak to do for anybody with one of the X3D CPUs on AM5. Now, the same thing can be done for the non-3D variants. However, because you cannot tweak the voltages on the X3D CPUs, that's where this really is more useful or beneficial. So what you want to do, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Curve Optimizer as usual. So if you go to your advanced CPU settings under Precision Boost Overdrive, you go in here, you'll set this to advanced. Normally it's an auto, but we're going to change it to advanced. And then you're going to want to go down to Curve Optimizer. You go in here, you're going to set a negative offset. Typically, we've we've been through this before, apply a negative offset. So basically, we're going to try to let the CPU achieve the same frequency, but at a slightly lower voltage by this negative offset. And so this is where it's going to depend on the silicon lottery. So if you have a good chip, you can get a a more negative number. So in this case, I'm running this with a curve optimizer of 40. So this is a negative 40. See where it says negative, it would be negative 40. So in, in this value here, you can set this. I would suggest starting with negative 20 or negative 25 because not all CPUs are going to be guaranteed to, to go below that. Uh, I think most should be able to do negative 30. Um, but if you have a poorly binned CPU, basically if you didn't win the silicon lottery, I mean, I've seen some where they're only stable at negative 15 uh, or negative 20. But most of them can do around negative 20, negative 25. So in my case, I'm doing negative 40, which is relatively extreme. And normally you wouldn't be able to achieve this on most CPUs if it weren't for another bio setting that has long been forgotten something called LLC or load line calibration. So that is something that used to be well used when overclocking older CPUs. Think of like things like FX8350, um, the older Intel CPUs like Haswell, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge. Those were the days when the LLC was often used to basically stabilize an all core overclock. So we're going to make use of that here in conjunction with Curve Optimizer to essentially offset the V droop that we're going to get because we're running such a negative offset. So to get to LLC on the Gigabyte board, you wanna go back over to the, it's gonna be under the CPU VRM settings down here at the bottom. You're gonna to go to that. And then now I've set it to extreme. You don't have to do extreme if you're starting out the default is going to be auto, which is actually going to set it to the lowest. You can see the yellow line is the one that's highlighted. So what that means is by default, it's going to drop the voltage the more the CPU is under load. So when you're at full load, you're gonna be running a much lower voltage than if you were on like single thread or very lightly threaded operations. So what we can do here is we can set this value to as you can see if you walk this up normal is the default standard is also the default but if you go to low low is actually higher voltage under load than the normal and if we go to medium it's higher than that and then high and then turbo and then extreme so i'm running it on an extreme because as you can see the line is still indicating a negative slope if it was flat, like along the X axis here, or if it was slightly positive, where it was actually going up, 
that means that it would be adding voltage over what you would actually want when under full load, which would not really be a good thing. That's really more for extreme overclocking. So on some of the motherboards in the past, an extreme LLC setting would actually result in a positive slope, which could potentially be bad if you're not using very good cooling, because at that point you're kind of overvolting the CPU too much. So, but this one, it's still resulting in a negative number. Now, the thing is, because we're setting it to extreme, we're going to compensate for the V droop under full load, meaning all core load. However, we've gone in, we've gone into the PBO and we have set a negative value of negative 40. So we're kind of making it go negative to which at the same frequency, but then we are also increasing the amount of voltage or we're reducing the amount of V droop under full load. So we're basically making the CPU stay more along a strict uh, operating voltage when under full load. Now we'll see what this does when we run Cinebench R23 um, because if it's 100% stable, you can use this every day and it'll be fine. But if it's not stable, then you're going to have to either do one of two things. One would be to l lower the curve optimizer magnitude, which means you'd have to drop it down to like 35 or 30 or 25 or one of those lower numbers less negative than 40 if it cannot be 100% stable. Uh, but in most cases, the LLC kind of corrects for that. We'll show here what the results are when you combine LLC with the negative offset of 40. Now, technically, you can keep going. Like, if this is 100% stable, you can try 45. You can try, you can, you don't have to do like multiples of five. You can do 43, 44, etc. Uh, 49. You can try to, Try to find where, if you want to maximize it, you can try to find at what point the CPU is no longer stable under full load despite running extreme LLC. Now, one thing I do want to caution people who are going to attempt this, do note that the type of motherboard matters dramatically uh, in terms of this LLC calibration because not all motherboards will result in the same level of LLC calibration by doing this. Like in some ASUS motherboards in particular, from my experience with ASUS boards in the past, is if you set an extreme LLC, it could result in a positive slope. And you don't really want to do that because that will, that can overvolt the CPU and that can also result in basically thermal throttling way faster than normal. So that's why I don't recommend that. So you're going to have to kind of see based off of your motherboard what this graph looks like. Hopefully you have a BIOS that actually shows you a visual indicator like this that indicates what the LLC is doing. Uh, the way to also verify this is you can use Ryzen Master in Windows or you can use Hardware Info 64. Basically any sort of mo monitoring tool that will show you the voltages so you can see while you're running Cinebench what the VDROOP results in and you'll see if you look at default VDROOP just on stock settings, it'll run around one volt. Uh, with LLC and negative 40, we're still gonna be close to one volt, um, but we'll show that here in a little bit. So now let's get into Windows. Okay, so I've booted us into Windows, and as you can see here, I've got Hardware Info 64. Now you can use Ryzen Master if you have that installed. I know not everybody's gonna wanna use Ryzen Master uh, for whatever reason. I myself like to overclock or just do things in the BIOS strictly and then just have them run all the time the way they are. So in this case, you can see we're gonna be monitoring the VDD vo voltage here. So we're right now at 0 0.7, 0 0.6 volts, and we're not really doing anything. So now we're gonna do a Cinebench run and we're gonna see what the voltage ends up being. Currently, you can see the maximum on the V-Core is 1.2 volts, 1.208. This is the actual, uh, value provided by the voltage regulator. Uh, this other one up here, this is kind of the requested voltage. So you can see the voltage is requested 1.235, but the actual is 1.208. Now that's V-Core. Now you can see, just for those that are wondering about SOC voltage, because SOC has been a hot topic recently, uh, you can see my SOC voltage is only 1.195. So that's well below the 1.3. 
Uh, we're not really touching SOC, we're not doing anything in this video. That's kind of outside the scope of what we're talking about. So we're going to go ahead and do a Cinebench run, and what I want to do is I want to look at the, the voltage here. So you can see 1.02623. So you can see it's it wants to go down. This is what's called V droop because it's under full load. The V the voltage is going down, but the CPU is compensating for that by using something called load line calibration, which is that other setting that you saw a set. So you can see now we've completed the run and you can see the score is 37,562. So the stock the stock uh, score for a 7950X3D is typically around 35,600, somewhere around there. So we have gained about 2,000 points uh, in Cinebench just from setting load line calibration and using Curve Optimizer in conjunction with each other to basically give us free performance. Now at this point in time, I could try a greater negative offset. So I could try like negative 45. I'm not going to bother to do that in this video. I think this kind of proves what this does, what this achieves. It's basically free performance for multi-threaded applications. Your single thread performance doesn't really change. It's still gonna be around 2050 for those wondering. But at this point, the only other way I could improve the performance further, in addition to trying to set a lower offset, would be to get better cooling. So this test that you guys saw was done on an air cooler. This is literally just a Noctua NHD 15 cooler. No water, no, nothing like that. So if I were to try to go with a custom loop or like a 360 radiator or something like that, for every 10 degree drop that you can do on Ryzen, you can achieve an additional 100 megahertz on the boost clock. This is just by design. It just behaves this way. So the better your cooling, then the better your performance in general. However, most of the time the IHS becomes a limiting factor. So that's where delitting and offset mounting can help. That was a big thing at Computex recently, like Noctua showed off something about that. So if that's if, if you're a true enthusiast and you want to try to push this even further, delitting is probably going to be the next step, or, or at the very least, offset mounting, playing around with offset mount kits and that sort of thing, or going with like some kind of full custom loop. So anyway, guys, hope you found this video useful, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.